Welcome to day 11 in our Defemoremor series, a collaboration with my friend Louisa Heinzel and myself for daily inspiration for making ephemera in December. This is our bag for today. It has some dragonflies, moths and butterflies on it. It's a bit hard to see, I know. This is the back. But more importantly, let's see what's inside. So our animal for today is this beautiful toucan. And our goodie is jelly pockets from Taiwan. Never had these. Super curious to try these. So this is what the individual pouches look like. <laughs> Totally funny and they're of course squishy because there is apparently mango jelly inside. It says, squeeze it, contains fruit juice. Okay, let's try this. Hopefully I won't get this all over me. This is so funny. Mm -hmm. It's like a thick jelly. It doesn't really squirt out or anything. It's really kind of thick. I can't really show you inside. <laughs> but it's clear, which I also am surprised about. I thought it would be like this mango yellow. And yeah, they're like jello pieces. Ah, here you can see a little bit. <laughs> would I know it's mango if I wouldn't see the packaging? Maybe, I mean, hard to say because I know it. I mean, it's, it's not bad, it's sort of sweet. I'm going to give this a seven out of 10. So let's start with our prompt, I'd say. So for number 11, we have a handmade stamp and a jumbo tag. I love jumbo tags and I love handmade stamps. Oh, this is going to be fun. And we have a toucan. So I'd say let's go with lots of bright colors today. And this packaging says jelly pocket. So it would be fun to make this into our pocket to put the tag into. He's orange, the mango's orange, there's black. He has black. I think that's just perfect. And by the way, this is what these little pouches look like. <laughs> if we're going to be making a jumbo tag, I think this toucan is a bit small as a focal point. So I printed this particular animal freebie again. And as you can see, I've reversed it. I'll show you again here how I do that. As a reminder, you can find these linked below in the description box as well as the free prompt list. So I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut both of these toucans. So I have my animal freebie here. I'm going to go on file print. Then I will tell it to only print the selected page. And here at preview, I go to layout. And here on the bottom, it says flip horizontally and you can watch it here, how it flips. You see that? And then you just print it. What I also always do to get a better print is to go to media and quality and set it from normal, which is the default to best. This is from a Mac computer. If you have a Windows computer, obviously your menu will look a bit differently, but I assume it will work similarly. So here's my two toucans. As you can see, I cut away the branch they were sitting on as well. We can still see the branch in their tail. So we'll have to think about how to deal with that later. So let's make some stamps. I have sheets of foam rubber here in German Moosgummi. They're two millimeters thick. That's approximately what it looks like. I really like using this to make stamps because it's super easy to cut. You can just cut with your scissors. So that's what I'll be using today to make my stamps. And since toucans live in a more tropical environment, I want to draw some like fantasy tropical plants that I can then stamp on my jumbo tag. This is challenging. Let's do a stem. And then let's just do some leaves. Okay, so that can be our first design. Then we can also make big leaves. Okay, 
And by pressing our pencil harder, we can also like make some marks on the inside, which we will see when we use the stamps. So I don't know if you can tell. So the middle line now here has a indent. So I'm pressing pretty hard. Do the same thing for this one. Then we could make one mm, just maybe like this. Just have fun with it. And we can also just do very simple smaller flowers. Maybe this one can also have this. Now I'm thinking these should have veins as well. This is already a fun collection. I want another one of these, but maybe a bit smaller. Maybe a bit more curvy. I think that's going to be enough for our tag. So now I need to cut all these shapes out and I can super easily just cut them with my scissors. It's so fun to have your own unique stamps that nobody else has. So I have everything cut out here. This one, is a little bit delicate and if it happens to you that when you cut something as delicate as this and you by accident cut off a part like a leaf for example don't worry because we're gluing them on cardboard anyway so you can just then just reattach it by gluing it on so i have some pieces of cardboard here i suggest you just go find some packaging maybe pizza or cereal boxes but I would suggest to glue a few layers on top of each other, maybe three layers I think should be good. Or maybe you have some other kind of packaging which is thicker. It shouldn't be so thick that you are not able to cut it because we also don't want too much cardboard around our stamp. So now I just glue the foam onto my cardboard. I have just like a regular craft glue here. You can use anything like a tacky glue cola glue whatever you have i would not use glue stick though and then i'm going to cut this down it's really very easy and i'll show you some of the ones that i have made in the past so you can maybe get some more inspiration of what you can make so once i have them all glued on i'll cut around them closely this cardboard is very thick. This was not the ideal cardboard to use, but I had these pieces, so I wanted to use them. And the reason why you want to cut relatively closely is so, so you know where you're stamping, because if you have a big piece, for example, if I just took this one here and used it as a stamp, it would be very hard for me to see where the stamp actually is going to go. So it's better to have a shape like this, and that way it'll be easier. So I'm going to go ahead and cut around all of these. I am leaving a little bit of a border because that makes it easier to hold. So these here are too delicate to cut out more precisely. So I'll just leave them like this, that'll be fine. The good thing is these stamps work both with stamping ink, but also with acrylics. So lots of things you can do with these. What I also find helpful is to first stamp these on regular copy paper so that I can then put that image on the back. So I'm just going to take my stays on ink. Then let's stamp this. Of course, when you use acrylic ink, it's going to be a lot more bold than using stamping ink. Although this is not so bad. So I'll go ahead and do that with all of my stamps. So 
So there we go. And of course they will look a lot different when we do these in color. So now I'll cut these out so that I can glue them onto the back of my stamps. I have to mention again how great I think it is that these prompts get us out of our comfort zone and they motivate us to make ephemera using materials that we usually would not have used on our own and it makes us think in a different way. It really stretches our creativity, I think. And if you can't come up with something for your prompt immediately, don't let that frustrate you because that just means that you're doing something that you don't usually do and you're gonna have to think about it a little bit more. It's not like I just turn on the camera and always have an idea immediately. I think about these things before, obviously. So if you manage to stick with it, even if you don't do them all, I mean, I know 25 is a lot. With each prompt you do, each time you step out of your comfort zone, you will learn. And that will add to your repertoire of ephemera you can add to junk journals. So now I can go ahead and glue these on the backs. And I'm going to do this as accurately as possible so that I know where the stamp is going to stamp. It's never going to be 100%, but the stamps that you buy are also never 100%, I have the feeling. But this will get us pretty close to where it needs to be. So we're all done making our handmade stamps. So let me show you some other ones I've made. For example, I have some birds. I have some Egyptian ones. I have these cute flowers. I have leaves. And all kinds of trees. Love my trees. And I have random ones. So here's this, like a sea star, regular star. We have this fun shape. Then just some odd shapes. Oh, there's another one, bigger one. Then we have just some circles, more stars, a circle with some punched out holes. Just some rectangles glued onto a piece. This is one of my favorite ones, actually. These are fun as well. There's another flower. Oh, we could use that actually for today as well. That looks very tropical. And another circle, and then there's just some fun punched out dots. So you see there's many things you can do. So let's figure out the size of our jumbo tag. I will first pick the page I want to add it to. Um, I actually think this one would be a good one. It's fairly sturdy and it has a good shape for a jumbo tag. I have another piece of cardboard here. So I want the tag to pretty much go over the whole page, just leaving a little bit of a border. So I'll cut here and here. So I have my tag shape here. I have my toucans. I imagine them somehow like this. So let's work on our background. I want to start off with this petrol color in acrylic paint and I'm just going to add that on. I'll use a brayer but you can use a paintbrush or a foam brush or even just a card to spread it out. Each will give you a different effect. Okay, then I'll dry that. And now I realized that was not a good choice because of course, <laughs> we're not going to see these very well. Even if we stamp our plants on it, I don't think this was a good idea. So let's lighten it up. <laughs> let's take some gesso. 
I just want a fairly thin coat, so maybe we'll still see the blue underneath. I don't know. We will. Oh, this is nice, actually. I'm glad I did this. Much better. So I will dry this again. I want to add some more interest to the background. I'll try that with adding my sky blue light acrylic ink, but just kind of letting it drip down. I'll add a little bit of water. Okay, I'll dry this. So this is what we have now. I think that's a great start for a background. And now I want to add some really bright colors with these stamps. I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to use some fluorescent orange. <laughs> so I'll put some on my palette and I'll use a paintbrush for this because I don't want to waste so much paint using a brayer for stamps this small. I hope this will be opaque enough. The thing, of course, with using a paintbrush is that you will always see the paint strokes. I'm wondering if I should maybe try that on another paper first before I ruin my tag. Hmm? That sounds like a good idea to me. I'll try it here first. I'll use an acrylic plate to help me. Ah, I just moved it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, this is not going to be a good print, I think. Okay, that's something else to consider. When you use acrylic paint, the paint also goes in these places, so we don't see it well on the print. I think I need to use way less paint. Let's try this again. I'm glad I didn't do that on my tag. Maybe this isn't the right paint either. Always good to try it out first, as you can see. Let's try this again. Be a little more gentle. Maybe not use the acrylic plate and see what happens. Okay, this is definitely better. Is it good enough? Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> so I'm trying to add a thin coat of paint. Okay, let's just, I don't know, put it here. This is so exciting. <laughs> eh, not the best print, but okay. We'll just keep on going. I'll do another one with this orange. Maybe it would be better to use a brayer actually because the brayer probably wouldn't go into these uh, indents. Hmm, that's something to consider. In the past, I've done it with a brayer. So I will try that next. Where do we put this? Let's just put it here on the side, like that. Mm -hmm. We don't see the veins at all. So I'm going to try this fluorescent red, which is a pink if you ask me. So this time I'll do it with my brayer and we'll see if that makes a difference for the veins. I know I don't think it does. It's going in the veins as well. Okay, so we learned that. <laughs> and I think I have too much paint on here. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay, we don't see the veins, but it's cute. Come on. <laughs> okay, let's do this more delicate one. Again, I'm going to use the pink. This time, let's have it coming from the corner here. Then I want to try this canary yellow. I don't know if this might be too thin. Maybe I need another palette too. These palettes are just covers that I cut off old calendars. Very practical. Oh, this is quite thin. I don't know if that's going to work. Let's try this one. Maybe up here like that. It looks like these primitive art paintings a little bit. What else? We have these small ones. 
but I want more of these. So let me do this one in the yellow as well. Maybe down here. It's almost more orange than yellow because I didn't clean off the stamp. Let's add some of these flowers. Let's put one here. <laughs> Looks more like a blob. <laughs> Okay, I cleaned my brayer off a little better and also this stamp. So let's do that one again in this pink. This is at least as messy as jelly plate printing, if not messier. Let's stamp that here. Let's do this flower as well in the pink since I have that on my brayer now. I want to layer some more, so I'll add some more orange. Let's use this one again. I like how we can see the layers coming through each other. So this one actually looks like it was stamped underneath this one. And also it's very interesting to see that where the acrylic ink was, the orange shows up differently than where there wasn't any ink. Let's add another flower here in orange. I moved it. Oh, it's still okay. Then I'll try this one that I made previously. Do some more yellow like this and one more coming from the side here. So if we place our toucans now, I think they could stand out a little bit more. So I think the way I'm going to do that is by adding some splatters in white with my gesso and especially concentrate on the area that I want to put the toucans on. And I want, I guess, fairly big splatters. Oh, that's a beautiful contrast. So I want lots of splatters towards the middle. Okay, let's add them again. So I've dried these. And I think they do come out now more with the white splatters. And I want them to hold on to something because I cut their branch away. It would be really nice to have an actual little branch, but I can't find the ones that I had in my other apartment. They must be here somewhere, but I just can't find them at the moment. But I remembered I have this thin knit set and it has this beautiful branch here. It's the set 661806. I will do my best to link this in the description box for you. You could, of course, also paint a branch with acrylic paint. This black, I think, is a gorgeous contrast. So I could have one like this and one like this, something like that. So I will glue everything down. So then I can cut these branches off. Remember, we still have the branch here in the tails of our toucans. So I wanted to cover that up with something. And I found these two feathers. If I cut the bottom part off, I could glue that on top of his tail. That's going to be the solution. <laughs> they are a more exotic species of toucans, obviously. <laughs> then I'm going to edge the tag with black ink. I'll apply it right from the ink pad. 
I want it to have a nice dark edge like that. Added some glue stick on the back and I'm going to add this piece of packaging paper on which I cleaned my brayer and splattered some gesso on top. And let's cut that out. And then I'll edge this with black suit distress ink. So by using the distress tool, it makes the edge a bit softer than using the ink pad on the like we did on the front. So now we have two fun sides. Love how this one turned out as well. And now I need to add it to the journal and we need to make a pocket for it. So I do want to use this. I think they go together super well. So let's cut it. So this is the page I wanted to add it to. I want more of the tag showing, so I don't want to keep it that high. So I'll cut it off approximately here, and then I'll cut off a little bit from each side. And then I'll take it to my sewing machine and sew around it. Actually, I don't even need the back side. I can just cut out this piece from the front and then sew around it to make it look like it was sewn onto this page. I just realized I cut it too narrow. When I glue this down, the tag is not going to fit inside anymore. How annoying is that? <laughs> to save the situation, I need to back this onto something a little wider. Okay, so I stuck this onto a piece of black cardstock and I stuck it on as a pocket. So in theory, we could add something in this pocket as well. And I just added the glue there and now hopefully it will all work out it's a little bit wider than my page but that will be okay so let's put our toucan tag inside usually i would let this dry longer but for the sake of the video i'll just put it in and both toucans can peek out toucan tag in mango jelly pockets <laughs> Handmade stamp and jumbo tag. We did it. I hope you enjoy making your own stamps. See you back here tomorrow. We're going to be at half point. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.